Hello, I'm Nesta Adkins of AHS TV, and today we'll take a look at student motivation here at AHS, as well as our own TV production program. First up, our own Dermot Sawyers takes a look at what does, or in some cases, does not motivate students. Take it away, Dermot. Hello, I'm Dermot Sawyers of AHS TV, and in the segment of Best of the Nest, we will take a look at students' motivation and how it is viewed from students' perspectives. We'll be taking a look with Mrs. Roop and Caden Hankey, to get a hawk's eye view, but first to Mason, who had the opportunity to talk to a few students around Armstrong. Let's take a closer look at what they had to say. Hello, this is Mason Schreckengost here with AHS TV, and today we're taking a closer look at the motivation of the students here at AHS. Let's take it to the halls to get a hawk's eye view. Hello, this is Mason Schreckengost here with AHS TV, and I'm here with Evan Stahl, Dakota Battaglia, Hannah Slagle, Ryan Farnan. Okay, Evan, as a student, do you feel motivated? Not really. Why is that? I feel like the classes just aren't as interactive as they should be. I mean, I have some classes that are interactive, but it's kind of boring. Okay, Dakota, um, as a student, do you feel motivated? Yes. Why is that? Because I feel motivated to get better grades, so therefore I could get into a better college and maybe go on further in my life. Um, as a student, do you feel motivated? No. Okay, Ryan, as a student, do you feel motivated? Yeah. And do you feel more motivated at the beginning or at the end of the day? End of the day. Why is that? Get to go home. And do you feel more motivated at the beginning or at the end of the day? I feel more motivated at the end of the day so I can go home and get in my bed. Uh, do you feel more motivated at the beginning or at the end of the day? End of the day. Why is that? I leave. Uh, do you feel more motivated at the beginning or at the end of the day? Uh, definitely the end of the day. Um, how do you help yourself get motivated? Um, just kind of do the things that are hard to do. Just stay disciplined. Really all there is to it. And how does it feel to be at school unmotivated? Not good. How do you help yourself get motivated? Um, I mainly look at my grades at the beginning of the day and see what I need to work on and focus on more so I can push that grade up. Okay. And how does it feel to be at school unmotivated? Um, it really, I can't really focus in class much because I'm just not in the zone and I don't worry about grades. Uh, how do you help yourself get motivated? Uh, I listen to music most of the time. Good. And how does it feel to be at school unmotivated? Horrible. You feel like stuck almost, I think. How do you help yourself get motivated? I don't know. I just wake up in the morning and I'm just ready to go. And how does it feel to be at school unmotivated? Uh, not very good. Don't want to be here unmotivated. Not good. Thank you for the students here at AHS on their thoughts about motivation. We will be sending this right back to the studio. And thank you to Evan, Dakota, Hannah, and Ryan for taking the time to answer some questions. I'm now joined by Miss Roop and senior Caden Hankey. Thank you both for being here to talk about your thoughts on student motivation. Um, first off, as a student, do you feel motivated? I really think it depends on like the class and the day. Like if I'm, if I'm really tired that day and it's a class I don't like, I'm not gonna be motivated to do the work in that class. But it, and sometimes even if I am tired and it's a good class, I might just pep up a little bit and like really enjoy the class. But it, it is all just dependent on the day, I believe. Definitely does vary day to day, yes. Um, and Mrs. Roop, as a teacher, do you feel your students are motivated? Well, first let me say thank you, Dermot, for inviting me here today. Um, I would say that it I would agree with Caden. I think it depends on the day, but it also depends on in their mind if they believe that there's a purpose for it. If a student doesn't believe that there's a purpose behind uh, what they're doing, then I think they do lack motivation. Of course, yeah, I can definitely agree to that. <laughs> um, and for the both of you, do you feel more motivated towards the beginning of the day or towards the end? Well, I've always been a person that's been an early riser. So for me, my motivation comes early in the morning. However, um, I have family members that are nocturnal, so <laughs> they are night owls. Um, so I, I do try to take that into consideration with students, especially when I have them first period. <laughs> of course. And Kaden? Uh, yeah, um, I'm not an early riser. <laughs> I wake up and I get to school almost late every single day, but I come on time and uh, just the, the morning classes, I think I'm just way too tired to really want to pull through and get stuff done. And then it, throughout the middle of the day, that's where I, I, I wake up and I'm like, okay, we can do this. And then the last like one and two classes, 
I want out of here. And I just don't, I don't really care about those classes. All I'm thinking about is going home. I definitely agree that that can divide students uh, between wanting to do your work early in the morning, you're more motivated towards the morning, or if you're more of an afternoon person, then yeah. you're more motivated then. Exactly. Um, and as a teacher, how do you believe you help motivate your students? Oh, that's a tough question, Dermot. <laughs> um, I think some of it is just a uh, mutual collaboration because the teacher can come in fully motivated, but if the student's not motivated and not willing to meet the teacher halfway, um, then that's where the conflict comes in. Um, I think it, if even a student doesn't feel necessarily motivated, um, just trying to give them some incentive, encouragement, um, support when they don't understand something, I think those all factor in at helping with the motivation process. Of course. I believe having some of your classes it is also it's very helpful when I see a teacher like you come into the classroom very motivated and wanting to help uh, your students out. It motivates me to want to do my work. Um, and this is a question for the both of you. Do you believe it is more up to teachers or students to motivate themselves? I think it's a 50-50. Um, if I'm going into a classroom and that teacher very clearly doesn't want to be there, well, hey, I don't want to be here either, but we got to do what we have to do, you know? You're a teacher, you have to teach the students, and the students have to want to learn from the teacher. And if both, if both come in motivated, or if one motivates the other, then the class ends up being just like a really fun class, and you actually get to learn. And Ms. Sidney? I think I would agree with you on that, Kate. And um, I actually had that discussion with some students, you know, recently <coughs> about how it's a mutual you know, let us meet in the middle here. It's not all the responsibility on the teacher. It doesn't fall on he or she. Um, likewise, it doesn't fall solely on the students as well. Um, I think some of the motivation or lack thereof can occur when students just don't understand the assignment. I think when clarity comes and, and teachers take the time to clarify what the expectations are, I think it does help students become a, a bit more motivated and then they're willing to meet the teacher halfway. I agree. I think if there's a, especially in English, I struggle there a little bit. If there's a uh, assignment that I'm not fully understanding and the teacher was there to help guide me and like get me, get me off the ground so that I could start it myself, it definitely helps me uh, get my work done faster and more efficiently. Yeah. And, and that's, that's positive feedback and that's good for us as teachers to hear is that when we can meet each other right in the middle there and you know have that collaborative understanding as to what the expectations are. Having that common ground is very important common for uh, students and teachers. Mm -hmm. um, in your guys' opinions, what is the best way to boost your motivation? Oh my, I'll give that to you, Katie. <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, sleep plays a very important factor in motivation because some classes tend to be really boring but uh, and if you're if you're tired and then you're in a boring class, you can't stay awake. <laughs> you cannot stay awake in a boring class. Uh, so I think sleeping, having that energy in you, will allow you to be more attentive and w still want to learn, despite the class not really being all too fun. I think as an adult, I function a little differently, um, <laughs> and and having been in the profession for a number of years. Um, I can get motivation at 2.30 in the morning, whereas at 1.15 in the afternoon, I may be lacking motivation. I just, I think I just have to just understand that it's like, it may not be how I'm feeling. Feelings are fleeting, so I just have to keep going with what I know. And, you know, what I know is that I have to stay motivated. Yeah. But I can be motivated at two, three o'clock in the morning, yeah. you know, and, and I can wake up and all of a sudden something will hit me with an epiphany of a lesson plan or something like that. <laughs> um, but I think we all run into that where motivation is going to be based on sometimes how we feel. Um, and we just have to understand that we can't always go by our feelings because feelings change. That's true. If that makes sense. No, I get that. That's good. And talking about being unmotivated at school, how is that feeling? How do you feel when you are at school unmotivated? 
should I divulge that on camera? <laughs> <laughs> I don't want the principals to see this. Um, no, um, what I try to do is I've tried to take time when I do have a little bit of downtime. I really try to take time for myself to just re really decompress a little bit, regroup, um, take at least a couple of minutes to myself, even if it's just listening to a podcast during my lunch break, listening to music, or just turning everything off and just being in silence. Um, I think that whenever you have that reboot, that does help you throughout the remainder of the day become more motivated again or regenerate that motivation. Of course. I agree. I think sometimes if you're motivated, or not motivated, uh, just have it, like doing a quick little 10, 15 minute thing of what you enjoy will definitely help spark that motivation again. But being in school unmotivated, it can be tough to, to get out of that. But uh, I've learned that motivated or unmotivated, you have to get the work done. Even if you think that work uh, is, is a little meaningless, it, it needs to be done. So you just kind of pull through and you, you get the work done no matter what. Um, and just to piggyback on what you said, Caden, I agree with you on that because in our recent um, Character Strong programs, um, that's one of the things that we've been focusing on in my homeroom is the fact that self-care is important. And, you know, we have to determine what is causing that lack of motivation. And it could be because we're just not focusing on our self-care um, and really trying to take that time to you know, regenerate and reboot ourselves and really decompress from maybe the morning or something that happened prior to, you know, what caused that trigger yeah. um, for us to be unmotivated. Um, so we've really been focusing that uh, on that in our Character Strong program as far as my homeroom where self-care, taking those few minutes of the day for yourself. And I always tell my students, I don't care if it's you're sitting there and you're drawing. Um, if that's what you need to do for that self-care, do that. You know, if it's turn on the iPod and listen to your music, your earbuds. Um, we all need that little bit of downtime to reconnect to ourselves. And do you think motivation is best uh, is the best factor to keeping up with your schoolwork? Yeah, if you're not motivated, you're not going to do your work. And that's pretty much just the basics of it. Yeah. Uh, Mrs. Ruth? Um, I tend to agree with that, but I think it also boils down to if you don't believe you have a purpose for why you're doing what you're doing, mm. that's also going to factor in in the motivation. Yeah. So I think having a clear again, going back to those clear expectations and understandings as to why you're doing what you're doing, um, I think that does help with the motivation factor. I can strongly agree with that. Um, doing assignments where I can see the direct benefit of doing them or understanding them more gives me so much more motivation to do them. And I feel mm -hmm. like Caden said before, when you're more motivated to do those types of assignments, you do better on them. Exactly. Um, well, thank you both for joining me today here um, to get a hawk's eye view on the student motivation. Until next time, I'm Dermot Salliers, and this is AHS TV. Keep on soaring. We're going to take a quick commercial break, and we'll be right back with more of AHS TV's Best of the Nest. All your professors, all of them, they know that all it takes is one dreamer with passion, one person, and they hope in each of you that you might be that one who makes a longer lasting light bulb, who writes music for the ages, who reaches into the mind and discovers a new star and who can change the world of a fifth grader. We're gathered here to hope in you. And we're back with more of AHS TV's Best of the Nest. I'm Nesta Atkins of AHS TV, and we're now going to take a look at our very own TV production program. Let's get into it. Hello, I'm Isaiah Brown of AHS TV, and in this segment of Best of the Nest, we'll be taking a look at a TV production and how it's viewed from a teacher and student's perspective. We'll be talking with Mrs. Gibbons today, and we'll be talking with uh, Mr. Kane Hankey <coughs> to get a Hawkeye's view, but let's first take a closer look at how some students and teachers feel on the topic. Hello, I'm Larissa Frain of AHS TV, and today we're taking a closer look at the classes of television production and the students involved. Michaela, 
On a scale of 1 to 10, how much have you learned from TV production classes and why? Um, personally, I think that I, it's about a 10 because even years ago, I've noticed that there are things that I still pick up on in like movies that he taught us back then. Seth, since you are minoring in TV production in college, what material from these classes has prepared you the most for a job? Honestly, within this class, you know, teamwork has been very important. We all work together all the time with Best of the Nest. And, you know, obviously when you get out into the workforce, you know, having some teamwork will be, it's like the whole point, you know, mm -hmm. trying to work together to get the job done. And also I think, you know, the hands-on experience that we've had in class will really help me like later in life when I'm actually kind of already know what I'm doing. Bela, why did you continue to take TV production classes throughout high school? Because it was a fun experience and I love Mr. Swanson and hanging out with friends. Maddox, do you feel confident going into college after the courses here at AHS? Um, yeah, I'm going into um, TV production and I'm so blessed to have such a great program here for it. Um, I feel like I could really do a lot of work out in college and I think that I'm ready for it. We also wanted to see what one of the TV production teachers had to say on the matter. Mr. Swanson, do you feel that you engage your students and prepare them for the future? I'd like to think so. Um, I think it depends what they're going to do after high school. Um, my hope is that a kid that takes any of these classes, whether it be media lit all the way through the independent study, my hope is that you gain some sort of an understanding of media literacy, uh, which I think is a very important life skill. Um, I think it probably should be mandatory in a way because I know you've taken all of the courses from media literacy the whole way through and it's been a through line through everything that we've done and basically it's my hope that when a kid leaves here regardless of what they're going to do after high school that uh, they're able to engage with media to break it down to understand it to see the inherent biases in it and basically not just be spoon-fed whatever the creator of said media uh, wants them to have, whether that be social media, news media, movies, or what have you. In terms of kids that are going into some kind of a communications media field, um, I try to structure this as close to a college program as I can. Uh, a few years ago, we were in talks with IEP for college credit, but a lot of things changed, and um, the program isn't exactly what it was. But I do feel that um, we've gotten it back to a place where it is more than just an average high school program. I can't say it's as good as it once was. I don't think it will be that good quite ever again. But um, I do think that we offer more than the average high school program. And generally speaking, kids that go to college from here are still ahead of the majority of their peers. Well, there you have it, folks. Straight from the hawk's beak. Back to you in the studio. I have a question for you, Miss Gibbon. What is your favorite part about teaching TV production to students? Uh, for me, it's the creativity, right? So students get to create things, and if they have a picture in their mind that um, they don't have necessarily all of the resources to um, come to life, to make that, yeah. that idea come to life, then I can show them different techniques that bring them a little closer to their vision. Mm -hmm. um, I love this class simply because it allows students to be creative. Yeah, like like a free like a free room feel. It's not like they have to have like a set curriculum. Like what we're gonna do. Like right. it's there because we do, but like you can do whatever you want in that category. You know what I mean? So yeah, yeah so 100%. sounds good. And then, um, Caden, what do you um, like about the class? I really just like the freedom. There's a lot of freedom that you get with the class, and uh, like you get to choose what you want to do, given a basic, like, outline. Mm -hmm. Like, every every assignment that Miss Gibbon and Mr. Swanson do is, like, make a, a video that using all the shots, like, yeah. shot, shot, reverse shot, all that stuff. But you get to choose what your video is about and how to make it, or, like, the music videos. You get to choose the yeah. song and uh, what you decide to put into the song, how you interpret it. It's all up to you, and you get to choose all of that. So that's why I like the most. Yeah, yeah, of course, of course. Um, Mr. Gibbon, how do you, uh, how does teaching uh, TV production differ from like teaching English class? Because I know you did both. Cause I had you as a teacher. Yeah, so. you did. Uh -huh. English, ninth grade. Yeah, yeah. Fun times. Mm. Um, well, I'd like to talk about how they're the same first, if that's okay. Mm. Uh, because in all honesty, in English and in TV production, the students 
do have the ability to interpret different things, things yeah. that they see, things that they read, things that they digest. Um, in TV production, you more so get that coming to life because the students are not only interpreting that information, but they are making it into what they see. Yeah. They're not just writing, writing about yeah. it or doing like a small project with a collage or whatever. They are bringing it alive so somebody else can see it. They can see their interpretation. They can um, come to their own terms. They can expand on your interpretation mm -hmm. of something. So I think that that is really a beautiful thing yeah. and how they are same and different. Yeah, sounds good, sounds good. Um, Kate, and I have another question for you. How does being in TV production uh, differ from other classes? Uh, it's, like I said before, the freedom from it is a lot more noticeable than other classes. Like in an English or math class, mm -hmm. you sit down, you do your paperwork, get your homework done, all that. But TV production, I'd say, is more like a shop class where it's, it's more hands-on. You, uh, you, you have to grab the camera, you know, you do all the work yourself instead of, you know, Sitting down with a piece of paper, just jotting down everything. Yeah, like the like the learning aspect of it yeah, is different. Yeah, it's very different. Yeah. Okay, okay. Okay, and another question for you. <clears throat> when did you first start teaching TV prod? Um, the early 2010s. Ooh, okay. Yeah. Long yeah. well, time ago. Uh -huh. All right, all right. Sound, <laughs> sounds good. Sounds good. Um, Kate, when did you first start taking TV production? Uh, that would have been my sophomore year. I took media literacy my first semester and then intro to TV the semester after. Mm -hmm. And I just stuck with the class ever since. Yeah, okay, okay. I'm pretty sure pretty sure I joined it in my sophomore year. As yeah, well. I think we yeah. were in the same yeah, class. Same yeah. class. Yeah. And then I was like, I like I like I'm like, this is this is great. And then yeah. I took off America. It's different. You like everything's like you said, creatively you learn you learn. I feel like you learn differently and you see like different aspects of like creativity so yeah and um miss given what is your um what made what first made you interested in tv production um well that is that is a long question to answer mm -hmm. um prior to being hired as a full-time teacher i did substitute for three years and in that three years of substituting i was exposed to a lot of different schools yeah. and a lot of different classes and I saw what teachers were doing, um, not only in this county, but in uh, the Tri-County area, mm -hmm. uh, what they were doing in their classes. And I thought, you know, I've always been a visual learner. Yeah. I've always been somebody who needs to see, see yeah. in order to, to digest it. Mm -hmm. I'm going to look into this. So I, um, I bought myself a video camera. I got myself some software that I loaded on my computer computer at home. I started taking videos. I started editing them. I yeah. started learning my way around things. And I remember, I remember now as I'm telling you this story, when <laughs> I was 16 years old, I was actually on a TV show. My friends Ooh, and I did a cool. weekly TV show um, that was terrible. It was a little <laughs> cringe. It was a news show yeah. um, in Catanning, in downtown Catanning. We aired on Thursday nights. And that was something that was fun for me because we wrote the show, we performed the yeah. show every you, week. You made it yeah. from scratch. Like you we made, made it, it from yeah. scratch. Yeah. We didn't have a teacher instructing us or anything. Mm -hmm. um, so technology has always been like one of those things for me. I've always been drawn to it. So teaching myself how to use the camera and how to do the editing. I already knew studio work because I had that under my belt at 16 years yeah. old. Uh, granted, things change. Technology is changing almost constantly. Um, so things were very much different uh, when I got my own classroom teaching television production. Oh, and I didn't just teach myself. I did go back um, and I got my certification in communication 7 through 12. Yeah. So I could be certified to teach TV production. Kaden, what prompted you to take class here at this class here at HS? I I don't think a whole lot prompted me to take it. It was just I was sitting in my freshman uh, classroom, my history class probably, mm -hmm. doing my scheduling, and I saw media literacy, and I asked whoever was in there, the guidance counselor at the time, uh, what it was, and they said it was like kind of a movie filmmaking class, and if I took it. 
it'd be better if I took intro to TV prod with it. So I just stuck with both of them and took the classes. Yeah, and now I'm yeah. here. Yeah. yeah. I was going to say, I, I personally chose it because, like, all my friends had it before, and I'm sitting here my freshman year, like, debating on if I'm going to take this class or not. I have no clue what it's about. I'm like, the teacher sounds cool. <laughs> I was like, the class sounds cool. And then I come back here and see, like, this amazing setup we have. Like, we are very blessed here at Armstrong to Absolutely. say. We have, like, a great TV prod, like, cast and setup. Yeah. So, you know, I ended up taking off with it, and I really liked it. So, um, Mr. Gibbon, how was teaching at Ford City different from uh, teaching here? It, in all honesty, um, it has to be the space. Mm -hmm. Like, um, we had very limited space. I think that in the district, I was probably the most fortunate as far as yeah. space went um, at the high school level. I had a classroom, and in my classroom, I had set up um, bookshelves. Right? Mm -hmm. So I created, or my predecessor created an editing pod in the oh, back okay. of the classroom. So we had three editing computers in the back, so students would just mm -hmm. um, Kaden, how has uh, what you learned at HS here prepared you for your future um, at media arts? Uh, I think anything and everything that I've learned in my TV prod classes has helped me decide pretty much my entire future. Mm -hmm. Like, I without these classes, I would have had no idea what I was planning on doing yeah. right now. And uh, I, I just think everything that TV production has taught me has led me to be the person that I am today. And I, it's sparked all of my passion and interest. Variety of kids here, all like so many time, different. You know, they all yes. have different types of hobbies. We have athletes. We have kids that are here specifically for academics, you know, and then kids that want to, like you, take over the game and do production. <laughs> so, um, Mrs. Gibbon. What were the difficulties in starting up teaching the class after not teaching it for years? So it was approximately, okay, exactly six years mm -hmm. um, between me teaching TV production and dusting off my TV production hat and yeah. teaching it again. Yeah. Um, so that is a phenomenal amount of time in the world of technology. Mm -hmm. So technology has changed. There were some things that I was exposed to that I never worked with directly like the telecaster i've been exposed to it i've seen it i've worked the telecaster yeah. i've never pulled a video off of it mm -hmm. that was a challenge um learning the precise equipment that we have here because it is something that is on a larger scale than yeah. what i was used to so i asked a lot of questions i wrote down a lot of directions as people were telling me things i made little like Cheat cards. I don't know. If, I yeah. don't know if you saw them around the studio last year. Uh, I had maybe, cheat maybe. cards. Like I put them in like a laminated folder and like put them by everybody's mm -hmm. like editing, editing computer. Yeah. So like if they needed to like burn a disc and they didn't remember how to do it, they had the instructions right in front yeah. of them. Um, yeah. Anything else? No. no. Okay. okay. Do I get a silly question? I mean, like I have, like I was like looking at this script for my silly question. I want my silly question. I don't. I personally <laughs> don't have one. <laughs> oh. Can you can you give us a silly question? Yeah. Um, sure. Think hard. <laughs> what does blue taste like? Ooh. <laughs> blue. Blue. I think. It, blue tastes like when there's the blue lollipops, obviously. But anytime I think of blue, I think of the blue lollipops. Okay. Anytime I think of blue, I'd say anything blueberry or berry flavored, or yeah. something around that. But, yeah. So blue was a bad choice. I should have asked, like, what does <laughs> chartreuse taste like? I don't even know what that is. <laughs> I, <don't know>. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't tell you that one. All right. But um, thank you, Miss Gibbon and Kate and Hanky, for joining us today to get a Hawkeye's view. Uh, on a TV production. Until next time, I'm Isaiah Brown of AHS TV. Keep on soaring. Well, that's our show for this week. Best of the Nest is produced by TV production students at Armstrong High School. And as always, we'd like to thank WIUP TV for airing this episode. Until next time, from our nest to yours, have a great week. <laughs>